I got invited from his brother, Jay, uh, to play in Z Laner's $100,000 uh, Trios custom tournament. So uh, that was a really, really cool experience playing against, I mean, uh, some of the people that are in that were in my tournament. And then on top of that, the other top players in the world um, in a $100,000 Trios custom tournament. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to another RSG podcast. My name's Alb. I'm going to be your host today. And with me today, we have the one and only Dario Streams. Dario, how's it going? What is going on, Alb? Welcome uh, back, if, if we will. <laughs> uh, I guess we should probably start off with that, huh? Yeah, so before we get into it, everyone listening or watching, this is take two of the podcast with Dario. Uh, not sure exactly what happened, but some files went missing. So we're, we're running it back. We did this uh, roughly a week ago and we're doing it again so it's uh it's good and bad it, it sucks that we got to do it again but it's good that we get to spend some extra time talking so yeah i'm fine with it either way <laughs> yeah we had like an hour and a half of just fire just amazing content just us chit chatting and talking about a variety of different topics and then just out of nowhere uh albo messaged me saying hey uh i <laughs> I lost the file. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was down bad. I didn't even want to message you. I was like, maybe I'll just do someone else and we'll do his later. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, we're back again. So take two for uh, for us, but take one for everyone else who's uh, tuning in right now. Um, so Dario is, is an RSG streamer. Uh, he joined RSG roughly 14 months ago. So just over a year. I think you're the third or fourth longest RSG member. I think third. Um longest rsg yeah, member. around there yeah so been with rsg for a while since we started taking on uh streamers on our content team so um shout out dario for being on here for so long um dario why don't you just tell us a little bit about you let the uh the listeners learn about you a little bit okay uh that's very broad but i'll i'll take it um <laughs> So a little bit about me. So my name's Dario. Uh, Albo calls me Dario because that's just the uh, Canadian. Uh, <laughs> that's the Canadian accent. Um, but yeah, so my name's Dario. But in Canada, it's Dario. In <laughs> Spanish, it's Dario. Um, stream. So I'm a 27 year old streamer. I've been streaming for about two years. Um, and yeah, now we're now we're. Yeah, I don't know what else you want me to tell you. I, you, I also used else? to say your uh, last name wrong, so that's pretty good. <laughs> well, I don't think you're saying it wrong. I just think it's the accent. You know what I mean? Because yeah. how do you say how do you say Mario? Mario. <laughs> I, so it's either you you your accent or you just pronounce it wrong. Yeah, order the <laughs> Mario other. everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it doesn't bother me. At first, I was like, hold on, this is kind of like weird but then i think i actually asked you that same question like on one of the first times we talked too yeah you did and, you and honestly i think everybody from here says it the same way i do we all say it the same so i don't know if it's just like maybe a canadian or newfoundland thing but uh we definitely pronounce your name wrong for sure <laughs> so I, I apologize for calling you by the wrong name for 14 months <laughs> no no it's, it's like i said it is fine because it's it's, it's how it goes but so a little bit about me. I'm from New Hampshire. I came down to Florida for college, and I've I've been down here ever since. So I'm I'm kind of used to that northern weather where I never want to be a part of it again. Um, but I've experienced it. I understand what you guys are going through <laughs> as it being uh, January as we're talking during this podcast. So um, I know the snow. I know the horrid uh, weather. But now I've been living down in Florida for about almost I think about eight nine years. I'm on you, to a, d a decade. Oh my god! You are very fortunate to live in Florida. I uh, I had the opportunity to go to Disneyland for two weeks, and uh, I fell in love with Florida. Man, it's so nice down there. I went in. Uh, it was like the hardest summer, so it was super humid. I think it was like 98 percent humidity that day um, when I first arrived. And as soon as I walked out of the airport, I just about fainted. It was uh, very very hot sticky weather but yep. once you're there for a little bit you get accustomed to it i guess and uh i can't wait to go back man i'm definitely once this covid stuff's over i'm uh i'm definitely heading down we gotta play some golf or something 
Yeah, I mean, we already kind of talked about it too. There's a Tortuga Country Music Festival that we were yeah. uh, looking at a little bit, which would would definitely be a ton of fun. Um, it's it's on my radar for sure. My buddy and his uh, his girl want to go, so if they go, it's probably a good chance that I'll tag along and come. We'll see if it works out with my work schedule and stuff. Yeah, oh. plus COVID restrictions. I, I know where you, where you're at in particular is almost impossible to get flights out or even just the cost of the flights are like jacked up through the moon for no reason yeah right now is bad like everything's more expensive in canada i feel anyways but right now uh especially less people flying and, and more restrictions they're just jacking the price up to keep the flights moving um they, they've actually cut the flights down significantly here recently because the fire department's on strike so um, they're trying to like slow down the amount of planes in case something happens. So they have people to respond, um, switch, which is crazy, but nonetheless, hopefully I do get down. Um, if not, we'll have to get you to come up sometime, meet the boys. Sometimes it's nice and warm for you anyways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A summer trip to get away from the sticky. Well, so Florida, you're right. You, you said it right. Cause Florida is like, like when I used to visit back in high school, I would come down here. And I'd be like, "Oh my god, I'm scorching hot!" Like, who? How can you deal with this? Um, but then, like, now that I live here, the summers really aren't that bad. It's it's kind of warm everywhere in the world during the summer, uh, and it's just maybe a little bit warmer here. So, uh, but yes, I will come up to Canada uh, if that is in the plans. We will do that in the summertime. Yeah, you. I think you you would enjoy it here. It's definitely going to be colder than what you're used to, even on our hot days. But it's uh, it's nice here, man. It's lots of things to do, and we do a lot of RSG outings with the boys in the summer too. So we'll we'll definitely get some stuff. And if you do come up, you uh, you mentioned you moved for school for college. What did you do in college? Um, so I studied business management with a minor in entrepreneurship, which. Um, I've always been in sales my whole life. Like since I was 18, my first summer in college, I've like had off and on like sales jobs, um, mm -hmm. from like selling knives all the way to selling door to door home security systems to, uh, corporate sales positions. So that's, that was my previous, uh, what do you say? Previous sale or previous before streaming position. I forget what the, what word am I looking for there? Career not maybe? Post. Yeah, but not post, but what's the opposite of post? Oh, pre. Free. yeah pre-streaming career yeah <laughs> oh, i was thinking it's i was thinking in spanish because i'm studying spanish so i was like antes or displays <laughs> and you're, you're uh, studying spanish yeah. right now yeah i'm doing a little duolingo and i already i already know a, a little bit like and i feel like if i was dropped off in argentina right now i feel like i could survive but i definitely can't like talk fast or anything like that i got you how long have you been studying spanish uh, the first class I ever took was in high school. I took like two, two, three years in high school. And I actually, uh, sorry to my high school teachers paid attention in that class compared <laughs> to like, I don't know, in high school, I didn't really like care all too much about schooling. It was only until I got to college, but I had like a really cool teacher and there, I feel like if you have like a good teacher and someone you respect and someone that's can make things fun, like you pay attention more. Yeah. Um, so like my Spanish teacher was one of my all time favorite teachers. So I uh, consequently studied and learned more <laughs> in that subject. That's pretty good though. It's uh, honestly, I, I was the same way as you. I didn't really care too much for the high school. Um, once I got out of high school, I was very into it. I mean, it's, it's a different world. You, you have to succeed in class and like excel if you want to do good overall in life after high school. So uh, I was the same as you. I didn't really apply myself a whole lot in high school, but you're right. When you have someone that you uh, you respect and and like just something you're interested in, anyways, you you will pay attention a lot more. So it, it's good, man. Having a second language is is a big thing, especially in in the U.S. Um, here it's English and French. They uh, they had it required that you had to do French for like to grade six, I think it was, and then you had the option to opt out. And I was like, yeah. I'm, opting out of that right now <laughs> <laughs> i had no interest in learning uh in learning another language in my mind i was like oh, i won't need to use that what well, like a huge portion of uh of canada is french so <laughs> i probably should have learned it i feel like i'm like you though if i got dropped off somewhere i would like i know enough to get through it but i wouldn't like be able to have like great conversations or anything like that i would just survive you know what i mean 
Hey, I mean, <laughs> I guess that's if you have no like full interest in learning the full like the language through and through, that's not a bad amount to know. <laughs> <laughs> enough to survive hey if you're thrown in an area where they only speak french and you can get out of that and like get food find the bathroom get some water uh, i mean you're not in too terrible of a position no for sure let's talk about your current living situation your roommate was i don't know if you've seen him he was in the background in the door waving a minute ago so uh yeah i almost picked up my phone and texted him like <laughs> it, w like like just stop like please stop <laughs> So any, anyone watching, you would have seen Dario's roommate in the background. He was waving to us. Uh, so tell us about your new living situation. It's kind of fresh, so it's a good topic to talk about. Uh, yeah, so I love where I'm at right now. So when I started streaming, I just moved back in with Mama Dukes because the pandemic, everything was happening. I was in between getting a new job. I left my door-to-door -door sales job to get a corporate, another corporate sales job. And uh, it was during the pandemic, so I moved in with Mama Dukes, and then, like, the pandemic went really bad. So then I got let go because I was one of the newest sales reps. They let go like the top or the lowest three or the three newest sales reps. So then I got let go, and I was playing video games every night, anyways. So what I decided to to do was just full full blown go towards streaming and uh, just turn on the camera and, and that was like the start of my streaming career, but that was about like a year and a half ago. And, uh, I was able to build up everything and get it to where it's at. And, and I just finally moved in with, with some of my buddies, like 10, 15 minutes down the street in downtown Fort Lauderdale. So, uh, it's a really cool scenario. They're all like videographers and photographers for, uh, they do many things, but they primarily do like, uh, shows and festivals for DJs and travel with them on tour and, uh, and like weddings and everything like that. So we're all like sort of content creators. I was talking to you, Albo, about moving up to Canada <laughs> and creating a, a, a content house, um, which would have been filled with streamers, which is a really cool idea because of obviously everyone's able to bounce ideas off each other. We're all in the same exact niche. Yeah. Um, but I ended up staying in the warm weather and moving <laughs> into a, a content house, but uh, different niches. Mine's Obviously, streaming, theirs is more creating the videos, editing the photos, and producing the content than themselves creating and being the focal point of the content. So it's a little different, but it's the same. They've been helping me out with Adobe Premiere and uh, helping my, my videos uh, gain a little bit more traction through uh, some special editing that I'm learning through them. So yeah, it's been really fun. I, I love this area. I got like a whole floor to myself for a very affordable price right next to downtown. and yeah it's cool it's uh it's good to see you're definitely i can notice like just in your uh i don't know emotions i guess you're happier like it's just like a good spot for you to be you're you're out on your own obviously being on your own is a good thing um in most cases anyways but you're just down the road if anything happens you're it literally like you said you go home in 10 or 15 minutes you got your your friends there um great support system the boys are uh goaded in what they do i like their instagram and stuff like that i went i went through it when you hosted your tournament and uh i'm following up on that so like i know that you know they're killing it too before the podcast we started today i mean you had one of them come help you like it's just an, an all-around good scenario i think for you especially in your uh your streaming career they can help you with your content um other good ideas you guys are all like you said in the same type of industry so lots of uh good bouncing off ideas it would have been amazing to get you up here for a content house, but I think that the situation you, you chose is, is just like a no brainer. Definitely uh, the best outcome for you right now. 100%. Yeah. And I don't know how I'd be doing during the, uh, this winter right now, <laughs> you guys are getting some <laughs> severe weather and that's just, after I moved from New Hampshire, I told myself I'll never live back up there again, unless it's like for like a short period of time for like a ski season or something like that, because the, the summer is awesome. Fall is very nice with long pants and a sweatshirt and feeling comfortable in that weather. <laughs> uh, but once it comes to the winter, I am 100% a baby when it comes to the cold. I like to be warm. And uh, yeah, that's just it's just not my style. But um, I appreciated you considering doing that because that was going to be a really, really cool scenario. Having RSG put up a house for, for the content creators and just a lot of uh, love and, and energy from you and the other team members would have been pouring into that. So it, it was really, really tough decision to make whether or not I was going to move to Canada or 
um, this popped up during that decision process that, you know, our, our conversations about it, but, um, either way, they, they both would have been good choices. I ended up going with this one. Uh, but I definitely do think about like how cool it would have been to, to have a whole content house with a whole bunch of streamers within like 10 square miles. Um, but yeah, so we, we, we're here, we're happy, we're excited. And it's been, it's been really, really good so far. I think you definitely chose the right thing because right now uh, with COVID, we're like in a level four out of level five lockdown. So a lot of things are like, you can't do anything. If they're closed, if it's recreational, they're shut down right now. And, and this has been like ongoing for a while uh, right now, like a couple months. So um, I don't know how much like content you guys would have been able to push and like different things you would have been able at to least do. outside content the irl content yeah. would have been limited it would yeah. have been primarily like clips and like in the house like stuff but <laughs> yeah. and it, you would have been choked because right now like it'll snow we'll get like a foot or two of snow and then the next two days will be rain and it's gone so you wouldn't even be able to ski or snowboard or do anything fun in the snow it's just been like minus 20 no snow <laughs> so you wouldn't even have enjoyed it uh, like why well, you wouldn't be able to do the things you wanted to do in the cold weather it's just like cold with no snow right now so, <laughs> so you definitely chose the uh the right spot to go i think <laughs> that sounds horrendous i would have been just sitting in my room every single night like what is going on yeah absolutely frozen but like you said i mean you're in a, a really good spot now the house you have you, you have the entire bottom floor so for anyone watching outside of his stream room right here there's like a huge sectional couch, I believe it is, and it's got a bar um, behind I'm actually, it. I'm gonna I'm gonna open up that door so you can keep talking about it. I'm gonna tell my roommate to like like get away. All right, so uh, one good. second. <laughs> so behind this door, uh, again, anyone watching, if you're listening on Spotify, you won't be able to see, but you can check out our YouTube. Um, behind the door, there's a, a huge couch. Um, he's got a bar uh, for I guess when you have people over. Uh, there's a TV mounted on the wall. It's it's so cool. He just opened the door there. So, uh, again, if you're, if you're wa watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see it. If not, check out the YouTube. You'll be able to see when the door opens there, or you can check out Dario's stream, uh, Dario streams evenings. So he he's very active. You can check him out on his stream and I'm sure he'll do a little uh, house tour soon. I think we talked about that last time, didn't we? Yeah. So the house tour is definitely, uh, it's going to happen. I just need to finish like doing some stuff downstairs. It's like when I moved in, there was a lot of stuff everywhere and, there's some stuff like the guy that moved out, uh, lived in LA and he kind of like left a lot of his stuff here. So we're just like moving that out and we're going to get it like set up as a nice, uh, man cave slash, uh, bachelor pad down here with, uh, this being a house of four, four guys. So, uh, we're going to set it all up. It's going to be really cool. And then there's also like a living room upstairs, kitchen, like full kitchen upstairs and all the other bedrooms are on the second and third floor. So, uh, this is like, just like a chill spot out there. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice. I'm very excited. It's good that they're on the third floor because when you're streaming, I guess, late nights, you're not going to keep anybody up, right? You got like a little buffer zone between you guys. That was like my main concern because they all lived here before I moved in. So I was like making sure with them, I was like, guys, you realize like I'm loud, right? <laughs> like, like, I, like I scream loud, but yeah, it's, it, it's like a very tall house with like a lot of space before up and down. So um, as of now, I haven't had any complaints, but they're also up to like two, three in the morning playing their games up in the second floor too and screaming. So nice. it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, everyone's has like not the normal work schedule as we're all content creators. So yeah, that's pretty good. I noticed you've been playing with, uh, with a couple of them during your stream. So that's pretty cool too. You get to play with the boys while you, that you live with, uh, just vibe out. You know what I mean? It's, it's a good atmosphere. I think all around. Yeah, I totally agree. I uh, I just want to say for anyone listening, the uh, RSG content house that Dario mentioned, it is something that's still on our radar. So once this COVID stuff calms down and uh, time passes a little bit and we move out of this pandemic that we are in, that's something that is still on uh, the RSG radar. So a little bit of leakage on this podcast, but I think that's going to get people amped for it. I can't wait uh, to see what the future holds for that too. It's like you said, the people that are, are in it can just feed off each other. You know what I mean? I think it's going to be a lot of good content coming out of that. Oh, that, that was like the, the, the only thing that was keeping me in like in that conversation because of the weather and the location was like obviously the two <laughs> biggest uh, downsides was just the amount of content, like the level of content that could be that can be and will be produced from that house. 
uh, is going to be amazing to see. Um, so I was debating that heavily because I know it would have definitely pushed my streaming uh, career forward. But I, I actually, I wish we talked. And guys, we're going to try our best to, to nail some topics we talked about last time and <laughs> have this be podcast Dario and Alb 2.0. But we had such a phenomenal conversation the first time. <laughs> so this is the second time recording. Albo deleted the file on purpose. I don't know what he did. Uh, rip. <laughs> Um, but something else, uh, is that I actually have taken my streaming hours and I've cut it in like a third, like a half to a third. Um, I, I would stream like eight to 10 hours a day. I would wake and then I would like get off. So this was like kind of my, my schedule. It was like really bad. And on top of it, I was like hating Warzone because of this new map that dropped. Everyone knows the Caldera. Not a fan of that. Some people are. A lot of people aren't. It's like a it's like a fifty fifty mix, um, and I'm on the side that absolutely hates playing it. So like my schedule was wake up like nine ten a.m. get right on the stream, uh, stream until like one or two. Uh, I'd be super tired. I would take a nap or eat some food, and then I would get back on the stream at like four to like ten uh, or eleven or twelve or one a.m. And then I would stay up on my phone until like two or three in the morning. And I was in just such a bad schedule. And <laughs> on top of that, I was hating Warzone. So I was like, I was like, I need to take a step back. I was debating taking like a one to two week break and just like taking like streaming out of my life for one to two weeks to see if I wanted to continue being a content creator or if it was like just Warzone that I hated. But instead, I just took a step back and instead of doing my, my 40 to, 70 hours a week streaming Monday through Sunday, no days off. Um, I decided to take a step back. I would cut my streaming hours from, let's say it was eight. I took it to four and I took one hour off to have three hours of streaming and then one hour dedicated to content creation. So now I'm putting out videos more consistently. I'm enjoying my time more on, I'm playing rebirth only because I just don't like the map. Um, and I'm just much happier and I'm starting another online business on the side in the morning. So I wake up now I'm getting up early, going to the gym or going for a run or rollerblading, which is amazing. By the way, I just got into roller rollerblading. Um, and then I take some time and then I work on my business. I eat my food. I've been eating healthy. And then around seven o'clock every single night, Monday through Saturday with now having Sunday off, I stream from seven to 10. And I create content from six to seven or 10 or 11 every night. Dude, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. And like you chose to stay in Florida and move into this house. And instead of staying a full time uh, streamer, content creator, you're now, you know, back to like, I still personally, in my opinion, I still think that you're like a full time content creator. Cause like you said, now you're doing offline content, uh, you're pushing a ton of clips. Um, you're doing editing on your own now and you're still streaming pretty well every evening. You know what I mean? So like you still stream a ton more than a lot of people who do it. Um, probably for like just their sole income still, cause you're streaming nightly, but, uh, compared to what you were doing, it's definitely like you said, halved out. Um, but if you had to come here, you wouldn't have started this new business. You wouldn't be in the position you're in. You wouldn't have moved into this house. It wouldn't open those doors for you. Um, but I think that like right now you're in such a good position um like we talked about it last time but like your positivity on stream now like you're just happier your moods are better you're not angry you're actually enjoying it when you play now um doing these half days you're pushing so much offline content like it's great to see that's that alone will help you grow tremendously uh i'm not sure exactly about your numbers or not but it looks like there's more people in your streams now when you stream versus when you were streaming the mornings and evenings like, I think your stream's popping off more. Um, mm -hmm. I think overall, like, it's just 100% the right decision that you made. And, uh, and like, now you're, you're doing your own business. Um, you're opening more doors in the future. Uh, more opportunities to be successful. Like, I just think that you nailed it, man. You, like, you made the 100% the, the right decision to do um, what was right to do for you. Yeah, which, which it wasn't an easy decision because for the last year, I, I think I'm at, like, a year and, like, maybe a year and a half of streaming, maybe a little bit more. But after doing that for, you know, when I first started, it was full time. I just, I just got let go from my job. I had a bunch, I had like some money saved up. So I was able to just like fully 
you know, focus on that without making any money for three months, which is what happened. Yeah. Uh, I think I made like $50 over my first three months. Um, <laughs> so I was able to, while streaming 40 to 50, 60 hours a week. Insane. Um, so I, I did that for the, like the last year and a half and to take that step back to go from the, the 40 hours, 50, 60 hours a week of streaming to, to just about like 21 hours of streaming is, uh, it, it wasn't easy. It wasn't an easy decision, but I, I knew I had to do some because like you were saying, my, I felt like my content overall wasn't delivering what I wanted to give to my people and what I had been giving to my people because of a various uh, different reasons. But one of the main ones being, and I hate referring to it over and over again, but I, I guess the, the larger picture would be I wasn't happy with playing the video game because I didn't like what they did to it. So me being a streamer, which is me pursuing my favorite thing in my life, which was playing video games, doesn't make sense if I'm going to be doing that for 50 hours a week if I'm not enjoying what I was doing. So it was like this long process in my head and I wasn't creating the content. I was like, I need to switch up something. And, and I, I pulled the trigger and did it. But there was a lot of like pros and cons list made. It was a lot of uh, nights thinking about like how it would affect my like streaming career. but. And we've been talking about it and I, I really think it's done nothing but good because offline content is king when creating an online uh, live streaming business. So now I'm focusing that time and energy into it. And I'm, I'm just, uh, yeah, like you said, I, I feel happier. I feel better. I'm able to give more energy to my people and, and get back to the positive uh, vibes, the, the palm tree uh, <laughs> having a community that we are. So all smiles on the island. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's what I love to see, man. I'm uh, a big fan of watching the boys, you know, excel and just be happy. Because like you said, everyone who, well, in my opinion, anyways, if you're streaming full time as uh, a content creator playing games, that's something that you have a passion for, like before you started streaming. And when you're streaming and you're unhappy, it can kill that passion for you. Like I've seen people who have loved video games, got into streaming, um, whatever happened, they were just unhappy. Like you said, it could be a game update. It could be, uh, just the amount of hours you're putting in or like not seeing the, uh, the numbers you want to see and just getting down about it and then end up not even wanting to play video games. Like I know a few guys who have sold their complete setup, um, due to just like, you know, going off that edge and just hating gaming and just like, don't even want a game now because their streaming career messed it up for them or, or whatever. So it's good to see that you didn't take that two week break. Cause I think Facebook punishes people for that, for like starting out. So like, it's good that you didn't take that break. Um, you put yourself in a way better environment. You got, you know, a good support system with you. Now you're pushing so much offline content, um, editing those videos. It's just, I think the recipe that you have right now is, is going to be what helps you push it over the, the top and like gets you where you want it to be when you were doing it full time. Um, and especially like you said, you got the, the media crew with you, like, the boys are, are so supportive of you. I can tell just from you being there a little time and it's, it's amazing to see, man. Hats off to you for, uh, for all that. You also mentioned the, uh, the pros and cons list. I, I love that. I would love to see that list. <laughs> so if, if I can find it, I'll, I'll shoot it over <laughs> to you after this. We talked about it a little bit in the, uh, in the first podcast we've done, but when, uh, when I approached Ariel about joining RSG, he made one of these lists as well. And, uh, I love it, man. Like, went through it thoroughly uh weighed out the pros and cons and like should i join rsg should i not join rsg what's good about it what's going to be bad about it and uh, and it's, it was a good process with uh with dario when uh when we were working on that all 14 months ago so uh it was a good experience and i just love how he breaks everything down like i know how in depth he goes on decision making so uh i bet that process was like something good to be part of you know what i mean i would have loved to, to see see you make that list <laughs> well i'm also like just a really like indecisive person and i get that from my father uh and <laughs> so he like he's horrible at making decisions i'm bad at making decisions so like throughout my life i've had to like try and find a way to like make these larger decisions like not the going to get something to eat but like when it's like <laughs> something big about like hey i was thinking about transferring colleges at one point and uh, I think that's when I either read a book or I was talking to one of my buddies. I think it might have been my roommate that suggested it to me. Um, 
And he was just like, yeah, write down what is going to be good. What is going to, you know, potentially be bad about the scenario. What's, what do you like about what you have? What do you, what won't you have once you go there? And it, it really, once you put it on paper, it's easier to actually weigh out these larger decisions. Um, cause it, it just makes sense. Like, and you can't think of anything else that is like all too bad about the decision. And there's just a lot of good things with doing it, then, then do it. But if it seems like, oh shit, like, I don't, I don't want to like, not be living in florida anymore <laughs> like, <laughs> like like i'm in like the hub of, of fort lauderdale miami why would i leave this area like you know like things like that and um you're yeah, in so the just, best spot in my opinion man florida is i love it there I, I i was only there for two weeks but i can already tell man the vibes down there like there's so much to do you you can never get bored in florida if you want to go out and do something you can't and I mean, like, there's everything around you. If you wanted to go a couple states over, like, it's just, I don't know, man. Like you said, you're downtown. You're just, you're in the, in the mix of probably some of the best nightlife in North America. Um, so many different people. Uh, so like whatever you're looking for is there, you know what I mean? No matter what it is and the weather, like, yeah, I'm sure you you got shorts on right now. I'm like bundled up in a hoodie and, and jogging pants. I got a blanket around me, dude. I'm in a basement of a house. I'm froze. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do not miss those days at all. Like not wanting to get out of bed because it's so cold. You get out of bed and then you want to throw on your sweats, your sweatshirt. And it's like yeah. <laughs> feet are always cold. Hands are always cold. Like, no, 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 no. The coldest I get it anymore is when my air is on like 68 degrees. And other than that, like <laughs> you got the AC on. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, nope, 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 nope. And nope. <laughs> no, man, you're, you're in, you're in the right spot. I think if, uh, if I had a like choice to live here or somewhere like that, I'd, I'd leave in a heartbeat, uh, providing like my family could go, obviously that's, uh, it's, it's really the only thing that's holding me here. Like, I used to live on, the west coast of canada and uh, i was there for probably eight nine years and like the weather up there it gets cold too but it's a lot nicer in the summer i guess than here but it's just okay. uh being away from family man uh i don't know i'm a big family guy um it's basically what draws me back to this place and also the people here are super nice um i guess everybody probably says that but Newfoundland is known for uh, the quality of the people that are here, like how accepting and welcoming and just like friendly everybody is. I feel like when you get to the bigger places, like people probably won't hold a door for you. Don't say thank you. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not sure exactly what it's like in Florida, but I've been to like, well, no, that's actually like a really good point because I've heard the same thing about like Canada as a whole, but also Newfie as well. But um yeah i mean the people down here they're it's not the same quality of service everywhere you go which i'm used to in new hampshire a small town and yeah. everybody caring about everything if you go to burger king you probably find like the nicest person in the world at the burger king and like here it's just like everyone moves slower and cares less if and i don't know if it's just the people that are born in florida that it's just like accustomed to them now because it's just like what you you are what you're raised around uh, but I found like a lot of the people like that are from different areas, like are able to instill those, like those qualities from like the area they're from. So I, I totally agree. There's it's, it's faster pace and le less caring down here. So, um, <laughs> I, I do agree. I do agree with that full heartedly. It's, it's funny. You mentioned the, the service thing. We just dropped a, uh, RSG eats video, a pizza review. And, the uh, the first thing the boys said when they came out of the store were that, the lady in there was super nice. Like we were, they were in there for like yep. 15 minutes and they were just like, so nice. Like we were talking, she just like asked, quiz us up and like, you know, really good service. And it's in like three or four of the videos. Like they come out and they're like super nice people in there. You guys got to go check it out type of thing. So it's like yep. you said, that small town, um, or small place vibes. It's just, that's what draws me back here personally. Um, like I've been to big cities in Canada and it's like, you're talking about, it's just like head down, go as fast as you can get from point A to point B and don't talk to anybody along the way because you don't know, um, what quality of person you're going to run into. And I feel like in those bigger environments, like where obviously there's bad people everywhere, but when you have huge populations, there's more bad people than there, you know, than you would in, in a small spot. So I get why people do it. Um, it's just like one of the qualities that draw me back to where I am right now. But like I said, if I had the uh, option, I'd probably be in Florida. 
I'll be yeah, golfing, that, man. That's, a, that's again, that's the pros and cons list. Is it, is it worth not having the same amount of the same amount of uh, quality people? Or <laughs> 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 Which there's still a lot of cool people down here and nice people down here. It's just the overwhelming, like, support and niceness that you get in the newfie area isn't is, is it what you get down here but is is it worth being able to golf anytime you want to at any of one of the top luxury courses that are within a five mile radius like 30 of them or yo sign me up <laughs> yeah. i would literally be golfing every day if i was down there man like i i try to golf once a week here on a simulator in the winter time so if, if i could <laughs> dude i'm serious i'm so addicted to uh... golf man i suck at it like I'm actually so bad at the game, but I just love, I don't know. It's something about you hit one good shot in 18 holes and you're just like, I can't wait for tomorrow. I'm going to do that again. <laughs> it, it never and usually guys, don't works listen, Don't listen to him. I watched your RSG uh, in a day video and you were hitting some, some hammering, some shots. So guys, he's, he's just being nice to himself. He's actually a decent golfer. Those were edited by Reed, so it made him look better. <laughs> oh, Reed, can you make me look better? I, my, my new camera is coming in next week. Can we like just try and like make it look like it's the new camera? Dude, it's so funny. Uh, when people send in their intros for like features or like welcome videos or anything like that, like so Grizz sent in one recently, and it, the immediate start of his intro is Reed, make me look pretty. And then he starts it. He's like, hey, guys, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> so, I actually think I saw that. I think I remember seeing that. It, it's so it's so funny, man. Like, all the boys are doing it. Like, yo, Reed, uh, these clips aren't very good, but if you could make me look good, that would be great. <laughs> and then they'll just, like, start their video. They always talk to him before uh, they do the intro. You know what I mean? It, it's so funny. But, uh, yeah, he's a goaded editor. He, he made that look really good. I'm definitely, like, I'm not the worst golfer in the world, but... I feel like no matter where you are in your golf game, you'll always want to be better. I think it's like anything in life. Like even uh, Warzone, like no matter how good you are at Warzone, you'll always want to be better type of thing. Yep. And no matter 100% how... 100% for me, yeah. Yeah, no matter how competitive you are or like if you drop 30, you want to drop 40. If you drop 40, you want to drop 50. You know what I mean? And it's the same way in golf for me. Like yep. I, was, I started out shooting 133 years ago when I first started. And I was just like, if I can consistently shoot 100... I will be the happiest man alive. And now I'm like mid to high 80s. And I'm like, if I could just get in the 70s, bro. <laughs> I would feel so much better about my golf game. <laughs> yeah, and I know if I got to 70s, I'd be like, nah, I need to get low 70s. I suck at this game. <laughs> but it's like well, anything. And, and that's that's the thing. Like it's, And I didn't mean to cut you off there. No, no, I'll do um, it. Uh, so it's like with things like that, you also have to take the approach of, wow, hold up. I need to like pinch myself and like actually reflect for a second because like for example with you in the golf like i used to like you used to hit 100 right and now you're hitting 80s or wh whatever it might be but you're not like as satisfied so sometimes we have to like take that look back which i'm not the best at doing because if i'm in war zone i know i used to get like three kills a game seven kills a game now i can get like 20s i've gotten 30 bombs 38 all these different numbers but now i want to keep getting those and up if not more but it's still like nice like hold on let me check on my progression let me think about it let me let me go watch my first stream ever again and look how horrible i am and look how like much i've progressed over time so so don't get too down on yourself albo <laughs> let's do a little self-reflecting after this maybe we'll go hit some golf yeah. simulators together <laughs> just uh compare the game to what it used to be i love that idea though like going back and looking at your first stream that's uh like anyone who's streaming that's watching this if you're ever down about uh, where you're at as a content creator or the content you're pushing do that like that is an amazing uh, idea and thing to say like just go back and look at where you were six months a year ago and where you are now and just see the progression um, it doesn't even have to be in your gameplay like solely but like in your your the way you stream your content creation itself like the content that you're creating the quality of it um, your setup you know just see how far you've actually come and uh, I think that a lot of people would be like probably the way i just felt when you were like if you think back to when you were shooting over 100 i was like yeah damn i don't ever want to be that bad again <laughs> <laughs> yeah like that's horrendous but then back then you were like okay like and now i just got to get a little bit better and, and and it's not even just streaming too so i i love that you just brought that up for other streamers to do that um but it also like if people are watching this and you're not a streamer and you're like a you create art or you create you're a photographer or you uh you work in finance like look at your books from years ago like 
Like yeah. there's so many things that you can do like in any profession in any a- facet of your life if you just like review and check your progress. It's it's always a good time. Plus it was just New Year's Eve and New Year's so obviously that's kind of still stuck in our mind because that's like a time of reflection. So um yeah. <laughs> I love that, man. Definitely uh people should do it. Just like look back, see where you were, see where you are now and I think that a lot of people who are feeling down about their content creation or, or whatever they're doing would be like, all right, damn, I'm, I'm not doing so bad. You know what I mean? Like I'm on the right track. Just like see where you're going to be in a year's time. I do it a lot with RSG actually. Like I'll look back to like, so you joined 14 months ago. I look back to probably like, we'll say like 18 to, to 20 months ago and uh, where RSG was, I literally was just doing uh, live LAN events here in uh, Newfoundland. I wasn't doing... I was doing a couple online tournaments, but strictly for the locals who came to the LAN events, like the, the ones who wanted more uh, live tournaments, I was doing it strictly for them. Like I didn't, ha- I didn't search outside of um, Newfoundland or anything like that. It was strictly all of us playing um, against each other in tournaments. So like looking to where we are today, uh, it's absolutely insane. I mean, right now we just dropped, uh, I don't even know what number it would be. Like definitely close to a hundredth tournament uh rsg has ever held um came out today it's a 2v2 kill race so like huge there's people from all over the world joining these tournaments now we have content creators from all over the world it's just insane there's 19 content creators now we got uh, a little leakage here we got another one coming next week um that's going to be announced on wednesday it's, it's just insane man like we have a full merch line i've literally sent merch to like I don't know how many different countries man it, it, it's actually insane to think about where uh where i was like you said 18 20 months ago just look back and reflect to where we are now um rsg as a whole has grew so much like and not even rsg but the content creators um like where they they were when they first joined to, to where they are now like just watching that progression dude it's uh it's really good it's one of those feel good moments i guess right now uh, thinking back on it all it's great to see for sure. And and I love seeing the content creators themselves um, excel. Like, like you know yourself, when, when people are in the talks about joining RSG, like I tell them, like, if you're not in this for you, then, you know, I'll feel bad. Like, if you don't succeed, I'll feel bad. Like, I want you to succeed. Uh, I'll give you the tools to help you do that. But, like, it's ultimately on the content creator where they go in their life. But, um... I'm all about helping people and like helping our content creators and like pushing them to be better and, um, you know, making montages for them, helping them create content or whatever. Like I ultimately want to see each and every one of my content creators on RSG succeed. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. Well, yeah, I think I was getting on this reflecting topic may have, uh, just got you in your feels a little bit. there. <laughs> yeah. Alba, guys, we got Alba looking back on RSG 18 months ago when he's uh, like, the, I, he, He's in his fields right now. Anything it's actually else wild, man. It's wild to uh, to think like that's a short amount of time, in my opinion. Like I did a a course in high school, and this is a long time ago, but um, actually it was college, so it, it would have been like two thousand eight. Um, and they said that ninety five percent of small businesses or whatever it is starting, like whatever your venture you're going on it usually takes three years to even roll a profit or like see success. You know what I mean? Not, not so much profit, but like to see that you're, you're on the climb or you're on the up and up. Um, and yep. in 18 months, the amount of growth that we've seen um, in RSG is just, is mind blowing, man. It's actually crazy. Like just to, to sit back and think about it for a second. And well, uh, yeah, that's also a part of the reason why I joined, right? When I joined 14 months ago, I was at a, you know, I wasn't as progressed as a streamer as I was. Like my stream quality wasn't as good. My microphone wasn't as good. The, this and that, like just there's a lot of things weren't that great. But, um, and, and, and in terms of Rock Solid Gaming, you guys weren't any face clans or 100 Thieves or even like an X set or something like that. It was more so, it was a different logo that wasn't as nice as this new one, which is amazing. And, uh, there's just some things about it, but the the leadership and and like how I could tell you were gonna be the one leading the ship and how much you cared into people is like I was investing into the future of RSG and and a company that that had the ability an organization that had the ability to grow 
to potentially get to the size as a top uh, of a top org in the esports industry. So it, it's definitely a lot has progressed, but I think we could all say that we we have seen the vision of where RSG can go, and this is just part of the roadmap. And it's it is nice to look back, but I, I would almost say we're not surprised because. I mean, we, we know the foundations there, the hard work is put in there and we have a lot of great content creators and, and great leaders at the top. Love that. <laughs> All right. We're going to get out of the, the feels topics. Let's talk about your success. Uh, one thing I want to talk about is, uh, the stone mountain. You played with stone mountain that day. Let's, uh, yep. I know we talked about it the last podcast that we done, but, um, let's start from the beginning, like how it happened, how you got into you know, got the chance to play with them, um, and, and all that you, you take it over. Uh, yeah. So that, that could be a really long story, but I would, I would say to start off how I got to play with stone mountain, uh, was through my entertainment of streams. So I'll dive a little bit into that. So prior to me, uh, becoming a full-time streamer, I didn't like watch streams all the time. Um, I, and when I did, I'd watch them on Twitch versus Facebook, but, uh, Stevie T is a, is a friend of mine and he's a, a mutual friend of somebody, uh, of our friend. So, uh, my buddy introduced me to Stevie and he, he convinced me to go, uh, stream on Facebook gaming instead of Twitch when I had just started off. Uh, well, we both were just starting off. Um, so went to Facebook gaming and, uh, I ended up finding a guy named I got puppies while. I was just like looking for streamers and I was very entertained. I became like a, a fan of his. I would, I would play in his follower games and he was the first streamer I ever uh, subscribed to. So I was a supporter of his. I would play in his supporter games. Never told him I streamed or anything. Uh, but then eventually he like was, he was live and I was just watching and he said, uh, yeah, nerves can't make it to this tournament that I was going to be playing in. Um, you know, it's unfortunate, but I can't play. So I, I commented, I was like, hey, if like if you need somebody, like I'd be available. And then so he DM'd me later. He's like, Oh, sorry, man. Like you have to be a streamer to play. And I was like, Yeah, I've never told you, but <laughs> I stream on Facebook gaming. Here's my link. And he's like, Oh yeah, let's do it. And then we ran that tournament. Me and puppies started playing like another tournament in the next week. And then we became really close friends. And now we play every single week. And used to play daily, but now we play like all the time together. So uh, he is very connected in the streaming world. He's very good at making connections with a lot of different people. And he's introduced and uh, ha allowed, not allowed, but gave me the opportunity to play with a lot of cool people like Schaefer Bates, uh, comedian and impressionist. Um, and, and same thing with Stone Mountains. Him and Stone were talking and Puppy said, yeah, I got somebody else I can bring. And then Stone's like, perfect, let's do it. And set me up with that. And it was, it was a fun time playing with stone like that was one of the only times i've streamed where i was like like every single person i play with or like i look at everyone i don't care about viewership it's all about like everyone's equal to me like they're just another human we all play like i play with some very large players i play with uh people that don't get any viewers and i'm just always myself but playing with stone mountain like the leadership of facebook gaming i was i was myself but i was obviously a little bit more conservative and double checking what i was going to say to make sure it fit his <laughs> content line and making sure it was not just appropriate but like is that worthy is that is that content worthy for, for stone's listeners <laughs> <laughs> didn't want to say anything too out of pocket yeah or just something that was just like okay like that doesn't continue the conversation let's let's move on from that <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to make it awkward and say something to make them not respond. <laughs> yeah, so, but it was a ton of fun, man. I, I actually, my Twitter pinned post for like the longest time for like a year was uh, we were playing a game. We had like, we won seven games in a row that first stream too. That was, that was a ton of Insane. fun. Um, and one of the games we ran into some of our friends. So the, the, the team that day was me, Stone Mountain, Puppies, and Schaefer. Uh, so it was us four, and we ran into some of our friends, uh, DG, Disabled Gamer, uh, Josh, and Punto. And I killed them at, like, the very, very end game. Not the last team, but we killed them. And on their death comms, they were like, oh, it's Dario. <laughs> uh, so they stayed and watched for the, for the game to end. We won the game, and in the post-game lobby, where, like, everybody can talk to each other, 
they all started screaming off the top of their lungs. Oh my God, Dario! Like, Dario this, Dario that! I was like, my voice! <laughs> and then I backed out and I was like, I can't believe they're screaming my name. I'm playing with the legend Stone. And then Stone was like, hey man, I'm just glad I got the game with you. Or something, something along those lines. And I, I like clipped that video and made that in my Twitter pinned comment for a long time. So uh, yeah, it's, to sum, sum up my story with Stone, Puppies gave me an incredible opportunity. We had a bunch of fun with it, and it was definitely one of my highlights of the year. Dude, you should take that clip of, of Stone saying that and make it like your uh, your follow or your like alert. You know what I mean? Every time someone follows, oh. like, I can't believe I'm playing with Dario. <laughs> I like that. That's actually a really good idea. I'm going to write that down. I, I seen Symphony did it when he killed a doc, but like way back in Fortnite days. Uh, doc was like, who is this guy? Someone saw him. And that's what his, uh, his follow alert was. So it was a cool little idea, you know, it could, uh, it could bring some extra like spark or whatever people here in stone say that is, it's pretty cool. Um, when you, we talked about this last time about like puppies and, and getting you in the mix with stone. And, uh, I immediately was like, I gotta go check puppies out. Like been so busy that I haven't been in, uh, a lot of people's streams who I used to, like, I used to watch puppies daily back when life wasn't so busy. But um, now like I, I focus more on um, you guys, you know what I mean? And uh, I, I haven't really been in there a whole lot. So I was like, I got to go check him out. So I made a point to, uh, to check out every time I, I was on Facebook. I was like, got to see if he's live, got to see if he's live. I think it took like two days. And I went in there and I was like, we well, were just talking about you the other day. Had to come check you out. Like hope all is well and stuff. And it's such a good vibe in a stream, man. Puppies is a legend, dude. He's uh he's a top tier content creator for sure. So it, it's good to see that uh that he's doing so good. And, and like you said, he's very good at making connections and he's like a people person um true like through and through. So like his shout out puppies too for doing that for you. Like amazing that he he tossed your name in, in the mix and got you in with Stone. So he said the fourth was Schaefer, is that right? Yeah, Schaefer, yeah, yeah. That's a good crew, man. That's that's some content creation right there. And you had a video made, yeah. right? It's on your YouTube channel of that? Yeah, yeah, on my YouTube, I got one of me playing with them, and it was like a recap of our seven wins in a row. It's it a pretty cool video. Yeah, so anyone listening right now, if you're uh, if you're looking to check that out, it's on Dario's YouTube channel. I believe it's just Dario Streams, right? Uh, yeah, every single social media that you can think of, I have an account, and it's Dario Streams on every single one. I keep saying Dario. <laughs> Dude, you're going to say Dario forever because that's the way you say it. It's fine. When I say it, I'm going to say Dario. So it's, it's, no Check worries, out no Dario streams on YouTube, everybody. Check that video out. Drop him a subscribe. Check out his other videos. Some killer content on there. Uh, this man's absolutely cracked at every game he plays. So you definitely want to check that out and check out his streams too on Facebook. Um, you don't want to miss out. They're evenings now. So what, what time do you stream usually now? Uh, so it is Monday through Saturday. 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern every single week. Nice. I love that. That's, and then we're uh, uploading a TikToks, uh, Instagram Reels, uh, re like all that stuff, YouTube Shorts. Uh, that's once every day or one every uh, two days. Insane. I love the uh, the offline content. So like the last podcast we've done, um, we were talking to Grizz a lot about it. Like he started pushing a lot of offline content too. Um, and like, as we know, he, he's gotten into the, uh, the algorithm and stuff like that. And he's fortunate enough to, to get a taste of it. Um, and he's a firm believer that the pushing of the offline content was, uh, what drove him to that. Like, even if you're on TikTok and stuff like that, if someone sees, like, I know personally from people that I know, like my friends and stuff, if they see something insane happen on TikTok and there's a stream link, they're going to go follow that guy. They're going to be like, Oh my God, this guy's cracked. I need to check him out. I would love to watch this guy play. Um, you know, see those plays all the time. So like, that's a really good thing. Like, it's just another way to, to pick up people. Um, even if it's only like one or two people a week, I mean, that's huge, right? In, in a year, you're, it's going to snowball. And basically people are going to share it a lot more eyes on it. So, um, offline content, in my opinion, is key to content creation and just like growing, um, overall. So definitely check out Dario streams. <laughs> um, I want to talk about the tournament you held. Um, so you hosted a tournament. Yeah. Uh, I think it was you and Tuna, right? 
Yeah, Big Tuna. Shout out to that man. That that guy's an absolute living legend. He's helped out my channel so much. He really has. I mean, I mean, I think he he hooked you up with that mic that uh, people are seeing right now. I'm very jealous of that microphone, by the way. Um, uh, and yeah, gave me a insanely discounted deal. He the tournament we hosted. He like funded half of it. He's donated a bunch to the channel. He, he was like one of the first people that like showed a, like a lot of like financial support to the channel. So like forever grateful to have somebody like that pop into my life and was a good friend it was and is a good friend of mine as well yeah he's uh he's a legend man i mean just from me being in your channel and like that tournament obviously and uh just being around you and and having you in the mix like i've gotten to know him a little bit as well and just overall a genuine dude um you know i i, I can't think of one bad thing to say about the guy he's like such a strong supporter for you um like you said, in every aspect, he, he helps you out uh, in stream, out of stream. You know, you guys on this tournament together. Um, just just insane overall. Uh, I feel like if you could have like 10 or 15 big tunas in your channel, you're set for life. <laughs> You'll just have that strong support system. Um, people who you can count on always going to be there, you know, gas you up. Those positive vibes. He's just overall like insane. So him and Dario hosted a tournament together. Um, 2v2 kill race insane tournament tell us about who you had in your tournament uh yeah so in our tournament we um we had some like the top professionals um one person that we didn't get which i dm'd them and like talked to them in their stream and they said they were gonna play but then end up going was aiden and he's like always been one of my favorite streamers but we couldn't close on him but we had tommy and almond as a team in our 2v2 kill race uh, we had FIFA Kill and Warzy. Um, I actually, I might bring it up right now, just kind of like, let's take a peek. I forget all the players that we had, but it was, it was a lot, man. There was a lot of big names in that tournament. I watched it start to finish. It was like 14 hours or something like that, start to finish, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah, being uh, being live for that whole time was definitely not easy. No, well, yeah, you hosted it. Uh from your Facebook channel. So Dario was like the announcer um, following it on his channel. Everyone was tuning in to see the progress and like people in the tournament, they would be in, in Dario's channel to like see what's going on or ask questions or, or whatnot. Tuna was also trying to help out in the back end with that. So two of them were trying to like get it all going. It was, it was an overall great tournament. I loved every minute of it. Just the feeling of having those people in your tournament, that must have been absolutely insane for you. Yeah, it was it was cool. Like I I took a screenshot of my DMs on on Twitter because like I was talking with uh like Joe Wo and like Bobby Poff and all of them. Like not all of them came through, but just I took a screenshot of everyone that was responding to me and it was it was really cool. I mean the list of people that we did have were awesome. Like outside of like my boys, we had uh we had Pick and Oak, we had Nick Cool and Examza, Unrational and Blast, Otter Eyes, Myapo, we had Sparty 8Vs, Destroy Clutch Belk. Dad bod the promise, FIFA kill wars. He controlled that Casper Y8 and C Pentagon. Some of the overseas boys, Dez attracts Stevie Nerves, Tommy Almond. There was just like a lot, a lot of big names that that people know. Uh, and it was really cool to see because it was it was a two thousand dollar tournament. Tuna like put up half of it, which is insane, and helped set up the whole thing. Um, and then we had another sponsor, Camp Bizzle, uh, a a Z laner like. Uh, supporter come in and help us out as well and then uh acre media actually the people that i live with now they did all like the visuals for it they helped make the posters they helped do the flyers they took all the headshots and made like uh headshot photos and uh yeah it was like a really really cool event and then obviously rock solid gaming came in with some financial support on it as well um so it was a really really awesome event fifa kill and warzy ended up taking first place um, which was really interesting because this was like FIFA kills like a pretty well known. I think he was this week's or this month's Twitch like number nine most watched Warzone streamer. So out of everybody on Twitch, the most amount of uh, he had like the ninth most amount of hours watched. And like prior to like him like playing in my tournament, he didn't really have like that many uh, people watching him or like that large of a following. But ever since that, it was almost like a catalyst. And he started like going into other tournaments, getting invited to tournaments, and uh, really performing. And now he's became like an all star in the 
the the war zone field so that that was cool to like watch his progression and like dm him when like he went won another big tournament i was like holy smokes that's huge and he's like yeah i needed that one <laughs> so it's just it's just cool to see like how running that tournament made some pretty cool connections yeah for sure i think if you looked at the uh the all-time like biggest earner list um a lot of the names that you just mentioned like earner list for warzone i mean a lot of the names that you had in your tournament you would find at like the top of that list you know what i mean like a lot of those people are i want to say like family known names household known names like there are people watch these people uh big time viewers you know absolutely cracked at the game and uh to be able to host a tournament and have these people in it i mean that's huge hats off to you for for pulling that tournament off and it was so smooth too um you know obviously with tournaments there's going to be stuff that happens we talked about this last oh, there time was, there were some bumps in the road and, yeah and hosting any tournament you're gonna have bumps in the road like there was a huge decision towards like the end of like the losers bracket finals where somebody may have gotten killed by a cheater but there was only like five people left so they didn't think the other team could win but they ended up winning and they didn't call it like it was just a huge mess and uh, there's a lot going on, a lot of moving parts that Tuna was handling on the back end while I was live streaming it. So hosting tournaments, as you know, and I know are not easy and there's a lot that goes into it. But I mean, overall, it was it was it was a really, really fun time. And uh, I'm just I'm just glad I was able to to like I, I mean, I may have had the most viewership I've ever had hosting that. And it was it was like it was worth me putting the time and effort and fundraising and doing all that and being able to promote your company, Acre, Camp Vizzle, and Tuna all at the same time. So I, I wish I have done more, but at the same time, with like how much work goes into them, I'm kind of glad I stepped back from that a little bit. And dude, every time I host a tournament, I'm like, damn, this is like very time consuming. I have so much to do. I don't know why I'm doing this. Like, And then once it's done, I'm like, damn, that was a really good tournament, man. I can't wait for the next tournament. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so like, I feel you like anyone listening to this as well. I said this last time we done this before I deleted the file, but um, we talked about people hosting tournaments and you know how much time and effort goes into them. One thing I did say was if you can make like 85 to 90% of the people who are in your tournament like if you can ensure that they have a good time and they come out with a positive outlook on your tournament, you're winning. Like that tournament is a success. Um, you know, you 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 come out on top there. Most tournaments, I'm, I'm not going to say most. Every tournament that will ever happen, somebody is going to have a negative experience. Whether it's they lose first round, uh, they die to a hacker, a rule gets broken, and they might have not necessarily meant to do it. Um, every different type of situation that you can possibly imagine to happen in a tournament will happen when you host tournaments uh there, there's no way around it you have so many different people from so many different places so many different issues everything will arise in your tournament hosting paths so if you are hosting a tournament and uh <laughs> you're thinking about hosting a tournament just know that things will happen things will go wrong it's out of your control all you can do is make the best decision that you feel is the most right in the time in the moment and just move on and like i said if 80 to 90 percent of the people in your tournament come out with a positive outlook and and they're happy and you know like they're they're vibing you did good it's a success and that's the way you should always look at it because no matter what there's always going to be someone who has a negative experience which sucks to say but like it's just how it is like people are going to lose uh things are going to happen and they're out of your control so don't like dwell on it if people had a good time, you did good. You know what I mean? And uh, that's yeah, all you can yeah. really expect. So, someone's always going to have a bad time, but you want to make sure the majority has a good time. And, and something that can prevent this, which this is like one of the hardest parts of running a tournament, is creating a rule list and thinking of every single what-if scenario that could possibly happen and putting that in the rules. Because that's, that's usually where like the arguments come about or like... Let's say one person was trying to not sabotage the other person, but they had just hopped in the helicopter, but then it blew up from somebody else, like dropping a, like something to happen. And then, but this isn't in the rules, like what's right. Like if you could think of every little weird <laughs> scenario, which is impossible to do, and you could put that together, then, uh, then you can avoid a lot of mistakes, but, uh, or a lot of issues, but it's, it is not easy to think of all those. It's not easy to get everyone coordinated to come at the same time to get all their information, but um yeah i mean the reason we brought this up it was it was that was also one of my highlights of last year as well 100 percent. 
Yeah, that was uh, huge, man. Honestly, absolutely huge. I couldn't believe it when you told me like the names that you were having. I'm like, damn, dude, this is going to be sick. I can't wait to see this. I was pumped. So I'm, I'm glad we got a chance to talk about that. One other tournament I do want to talk about uh, before we wrap this up is the Z-Liner tournament. So you've recently played in a, uh, a, a pretty insane tournament. I'm going to let you tell us about it. I was pretty happy to see that too. So uh, beside, I'll get to that tournament in one second, but I do want to just mention out there, I, I beat Z laner in a 2v2 tournament one time, and uh, <laughs> I was using that. It, he was playing with his brother, Jay, which is a friend of mine, uh, which obviously isn't his normal 2v2 kill race partner. Um, Jay actually just started, and that might have been his first competition ever in Warzone. Uh, but so I, <laughs> nonetheless, Z laner was on the team, and uh, me and my partner beat him in a tournament. So I was using that to try and get him into the tournament that I hosted. <laughs> and I was like, yo, Z, do you remember we played each other? Like, I didn't say, like, I beat you, but I, like, donated $5. I was like, hey, do you remember we played each other in a 2v2 with your brother? I'm um, hosting a tournament, but I, I couldn't get him on board. But So I went from playing against him to hosting the tournament to uh, I got invited from his brother, Jay, uh, to play in Z Laner's $100,000 uh, Trios Custom Tournament. So... Uh, that was a really, really cool experience playing against, I mean, uh, some of the people that are in, that were in my tournament. And then on top of that, the other top players in the world, um, in a hundred thousand dollar trios custom tournament was beyond incredible experience. We, we kind of got our face kicked in. It was our first time playing <laughs> together, but just, just the experience of doing that and having that opportunity was, was really cool to be, uh, in that mix. For sure. Who was your, your third for that? Uh, Jay invited me. So Jay Laner, myself, and Cranny. Nice. So uh, that's actually pretty insane, man. So like for people who don't know, Z is from Newfoundland as well, uh, where she was born. Uh, Cranny is too. I'm assuming that Jay is. Like I'm not 100% sure. Um, I don't know if he was like born after they moved or whatnot, but uh, like for sure two of the boys are. So like that's insane that it's such a small world dude like you're from somewhere totally different and like just getting in the mix with, with the boys like that like that's insane but uh definitely overall i think that was a crazy tournament to be invited into um so you know a staple like z hosting a massive 100k tournament and then his brother inviting you to play on their team like that's got to be one of those feel-good moments i bet yeah it was it was definitely cool and it's it's like 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 we were saying, it's good to reflect and look back and going from playing these like Z League tournaments and like uh, some random like searching Discord to try and find a tournament to play to you know at the end of Verdansk where I was like very heavy in competition, it was me getting like DMs from people inviting me to play in tournaments almost every single definitely every single week, but almost nightly where I'd have to like decline some because there was like two that would pop up at the same time. It was that's a really cool thing to see overall. I've, I've kind of stepped back on the competitive side and I almost think the competitive side of Warzone is kind of dying as well, just because nobody wants to really play Caldera in like a competitive format. Um, at least not as many people. So, uh, towards the end of her dance, it was really cool to see like the progression of searching discords for, for tournaments to being invited was, is, is like a really nice to look back. Yeah. You're having one of those moments I was having earlier right now. <laughs> <clears throat> i don't know what you're talking about i'm not i'm not in my feels at all right now <laughs> that's that's cracked man i feel like for 2022 you're gonna have a banging year i think that you're gonna see like a lot of things that you wanted to see last year happen and i hope that you can top like your biggest moments like that z tournament beating z playing with stone hosting that tournament like i hope that everything that happens this year just tops all of those things as well for you uh i know i'm excited to see where this year brings you uh overall and i i can't wait man i'm happy to be part of it and and to watch it unfold and you know to to be here with you um for anything that comes up or, or whatnot uh during the the process but i can't wait to see some of these big things that you have planned happen again this year and i, I know i for one am rooting for you big time man well i appreciate that i i hope i do sure hope so you are but uh <laughs> No, thank you for everything, man. Thank you for having me back on the podcast, even though they uh, didn't get to hear the first one. And uh, I think we did a pretty decent 2.0. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. 
Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you want to find me, it's just Darius Streams on every single social media platform. Um, yeah, and I appreciate all your support, Al. I appreciate you being part of uh, of RSG and everything that you've done as well. Uh, you know, from helping out with tournaments, rules, and stuff like that, uh, competing in them, sharing them. I uh, appreciate it all, man. It's been an absolute uh, pleasure, sorry, uh, up to this point, and I can't see that changing. So I'm I'm excited to see what this next year brings. And uh, yeah, like Dario said, we're going to have Reed drop the socials under his webcam right now so you guys can see them. Uh, be sure to go follow him, like him, uh, whatever you need to do. Check out his live streams. You guys will absolutely love him. And I'm sure we're going to have you back on future podcasts, man. I loved uh, talking to you both times. And uh, with that, guys, we're going to end it here. We will be back again next week with another podcast. And I appreciate you guys listening. Hope you're enjoying them. And until next time, guys. Adios.